Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Emily, for, for this good time. Uh, I think we can start with um, a round of introduction. Uh, but before, I'm, I'm just going to, to talk about uh, child care reform in Rwanda. Uh, so myself who is going to make this presentation. I'm called uh, James Ndoayo. Uh, I work for the National Child Development Agency, which is uh, an institution that oversees and coordinates uh, child development and child protection across uh, the country. So myself, I'm the senior program manager for Tubarere Murjango. Uh, locally um, known as Tuare Murjango, but uh, literally translated as Let's Raise Children into Families. So this is a child care and protection program that was put in place in 2013 to support and to drive uh, the implementation of the national uh, strategy for child care reform. So uh, I think we can move uh, with uh, the next um, slide on my presentation. So I will be talking about um, uh, the basic uh, statistics for child care reform in Rwanda. So I will also talk about uh, some of the achievements that we made in implementing the child care reform. Uh, of course, uh, I will also touch on um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the challenges that we made and the lessons learned. Now, to, to begin with, um, I will start saying that uh, in Rwanda, we have uh, a population of about 10.5 million, according to the fourth Rwanda population and the housing census of 2012. But the projection uh, tell us that in 2019, we had to be with 12.6 million, while in 2020, we have, we have to have 12.9 uh, million. So uh, children in residential care institution, uh, according to our um, figures, we have 447 children. Um, when it comes to children in formal foster care and kinship care, uh, we don't really have exact figures. So um, we could not uh, easily uh, find those figures, but they are there, but it's not easy to, to track because they are not um, figures that are uh, collected on a routine basis, so it was not easy uh, to find. Uh, I can also uh, let you know that uh, we have uh, 30 um, social child welfare workforce. We have a 30 deployed across the country with the rationale of one uh, staff per district. Uh, here I can also mention that we have um, uh, volunteer uh, child welfare workforce that we call Inshutizum Murjango or Friends of the Family. Those are family and child protection volunteers. They are uh, about 29,000 deployed across the country where we have two volunteers per village. Uh, here um, on this um, a slide, uh, I just want to, 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 to take you through the main steps uh, taken the care reform process in, in Rwanda. Uh, here we can say, I can start by uh, telling you that um, in, uh, in Rwanda we on, on, um, on an annual basis we held uh, National Children's Summit. Now, um, 
uh, in the seventh National Children's Summit, the children expressed, uh, you know, when children come in this, in this meeting, in this summit, they express uh, different views. And in the most, of, most of the time, this uh, meeting is chaired by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda. Now, uh, in this uh, seventh National Children's Summit, that's where children uh, mentioned that um, children that are living in orphanages or institution should gain the right, uh, should regain their right to live in families. So from there, the government uh, took a commitment to integrate children that were that are living in, that were living in institutions into uh, family-based based care. So this uh, just uh, brought the momentum, the, the momentum of uh, other uh, intervention which followed here. I can mention the National Survey on Institutional Care, which was conducted in 2012. And this um, survey may, uh, revealed that 3,323 3, 3, children and young adults were living in 30, 33 orphanages. So uh, this national survey served as a basis of uh, is, of establishing the national uh, the strategy for national child care reform in 2012. So from that strategy, from that, this uh, the establishment of that strategy, that's where other initiatives um, for reintegration or for the institutionalization of children started. Now to operationalize the strategy for national child care reform. In March 2013, the TMM program was established. Um, here I can also uh, talk about another step which was recently taken is about uh, the deinstitutionalization of children with disabilities where in January 2020, we started piloting the inclusive reintegration of children. Now, what are the key uh, achievements in implementing the child care uh, reform? Uh, we, uh, to, to start with on this achievement, uh, although I touched on this after the, uh, the establishment of the TMM program, uh, we also recruited and trained 68 social workforce professionals that uh, were, respons were responsible of the implementation of the care reform across the country. Uh, a very big achievement that I can mention here is that 3,335 children, that is 88%, well, out of 3,782 uh, uh, children were placed into family-based care and other alternative care arrange arrangements. Here people can ask themselves why and how uh, from the baseline of 3,332, we came up with those three, uh, uh, 1,700 plus. It's because after um, the, the, the National Survey on Institutional Care, four more institutions were, were, uh, were discovered, which, uh, which increased the number uh, of, of children that we have at the start of the program. So, um, uh, to continue with this, uh, this achievement, uh, we, out of 38 residential care institutions that we had, we still uh, remain with four, while the other 34, that is 89.9%, uh, eight, uh, uh, have, have, have closed and transformed into other centers, providing uh, services to family and the children. Uh, another achievement, we have also uh, uh, established 
the community-based family and the child pro protection volunteers that we locally call in Shutuzum Moriango, literally meaning as friends of the family. I have earlier on talked about this to follow up on the welfare of children uh, that were present to families, but that this is not their, their only um, responsibility. Uh, they are there to support in the following up on, on the welfare of those children that were present to families. But again, the main, their main uh, responsibility is to ensure that they, uh, they, 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 they stay closer to families to ensure that all uh, child protection uh, issues at the community level are addressed and any issue that is beyond their capacity is reported to the professional social workforce that are at the district level. We have also uh, established and deployed a digital reporting system that these community volunteers use. We have also uh, recently established a, hot, a, seven one hot, a, a hotline which is which uses which um, a hotline which uses a seven one one as a a number to call. So we have also uh, recruited, assessed, assessed, and accredited foster care families that we locally call as um, we locally call Malaika Molinzi or Guardian Angels. So those um, foster care families are the families that that are there to support in receiving children that uh, are not able to be um, uh, placed with their uh, extended families or their own uh, families. So um, I can't um, uh, move in my presentation about talking about the challenges. The first challenge that we encountered in, uh, in, in our implementation is the resistance from institutional managers. So um, when we started, some of the heads of, of centers or institution were not really um, understanding the, 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 the intervention, the program. So we had to always engage them and support in institutional transformation and always uh, um, engage them uh, discussing with them that the, the, the care reform doesn't aims at uh, closing the institution, but rather uh, aims at the same time in transforming the institutions into other uh, centers that provide uh, services to communities and the families. Another challenge that we encountered is the integration of children with disabilities. Uh, children with disabilities that we, sorry, reintegration, family integration of children with disabilities was, was not easy. Uh, you can ask yourself, sorry, you can ask yourself why uh, why this was not easy is because when we started the specific approaches uh, were not uh, focusing on centers that cater exclusively to children and youth with disabilities, although we did not exclude them. So um, those approaches and the methodologies, what I can say here is that those approaches and the methodologies were not really um, were not really tailored, tailored to children with disabilities. So we had to make sure that those uh, are revised and adapted to children with disabilities. So we also, as I have uh, mentioned, we also had a challenge of having um, unregistered institutions. As I've mentioned, formal institutions were discovered, were discovered after the 2012 survey. There is also a challenge of child abandonment and family separation. So this, this 
will and had, have start, started being addressed through an appropriate case management, management system that can monitor and coordinate sector support to children protection and follow up or follow up or children need of child protection within the government system. So uh, initiatives to review the current system have started and will propose a relevant uh, case management. So uh, we know that cases of child abandonment and family separation will continue, but um, we, when we'll be having uh, an, a strong uh, child, uh, child protection case management system, will be able to, 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 to always find easy solution to those cases of child abandonment and family separation. Now, what are the lessons learned? The first lesson we, lesson we learned is that the, the, the government ownership is really key in the implementation of child care reform because uh, always uh, the government is, uh, is needs to, to be, uh, to, when the government owns uh, the program, when the government is, uh, is aware, is, is, is reading, other pe it's very easy for other people to, to align. Uh, another lesson learned is that the reintegration of children into family-based care should go hand in hand with institutional transformation. Just as, as, as I said, because um, when people see that uh, we, remove, we, 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 you remove, uh, you move children into families, you need also to make sure that uh, this uh, institution, the, the, the institution will continue to learn, will continue to operate, but with giving other uh, services. Uh, another lesson learned is that uh, child care reforms are sustainable when uh, coupled, coupled with other initiatives of child protection system strengthening. So care reforms, it's, it's always good if care reforms go hand in hand with strengthening of the child protection system. Uh, we also learned that we, whenever you don't have uh, skilled social workforce professionals, you are not, uh, you are unlikely to implement a strong uh, care reform. So, and, and uh, given uh, the, our successes were also registered because uh, the, the, the implementation of child care reform in our country was also built on local tradition and the cultures. For example, if I, I go um, back to how um, before the establishment of uh, the first orphanage, the way uh, children were taken, vulnerable children were taken, were taken care of, uh, they were, if a child uh, lost uh, his or her, mother, uh, her, her parent, the rest of uh, the family members could take care of uh, those children. But, after um, the, the, the orphanage is to be established, the people started uh, finding orphanages as the first solution inst instead of going to find the solution in their, in their communities. So uh, it, the, the child care, establishing the child care reform was also to revive uh, the traditions, the Rwandan tradition, the cultures, uh, about taking care of uh, vulnerable uh, children. Another lesson we learned, we, we learned is that um, we need to, to pay particular at attention on young adults in the institution uh, because uh, young adults, most of the time, you may not find uh, parents of um, uh, families that are ready to receive young adults. So for young adults, we need to pay particular attention for them to be uh, well, well, uh, well supported when it comes to uh, family integration. So um, 
we another um, the last but not least is just uh, working with children with disabilities. As I've been saying, uh, the, met the methodologies and approaches we used were not tailored uh, to children with disabilities. So we had to make sure whenever you are implementing, we need to make sure that you also um, you, 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 you adapt uh, your methodologies, your approaches to all the categories of children. So you need to ensure that children with disabilities are also considered, considered since the initial phases. Thank you uh, so much for your kind attention. So this is uh, a summary of what we did uh, when it comes to implementing the child care reform in Rwanda.